I've been asked several times about the aerosol masking effect and how much we are losing right now. I've also been asked about the relationship between COVID-19, the so-called coronavirus, and abrupt climate change, and they are related. So here is, to the best of my understanding, what's going on. First, a 20% reduction in industrial activity leads to a one degree Celsius global average temperature spike in a very short period of time. People have indicated that we must not have hit that yet because we're not all dying in droves. So let's back up a little bit and see what's actually going on in the world. First, a hypothetical scenario. Imagine that I'm king for the day, king for the planet, and not just for a day, for a few months. What would I do? Here's what I would do. To stop the coronavirus in its tracks in various locations, social isolation is necessary. We have to keep people from mixing to a great extent. Guess what? China went into a complete lockdown, as they are quite capable of doing, given the totalitarian government there. And in two weeks, they stopped the shutdown, and by that time, the coronavirus had stopped spreading. Also, by that time, there had been a significant spike in temperature over China. Obviously, as the aerosols fall out of the atmosphere, the impact is local at first, and then regional, and ultimately global. So China shut down for a couple of weeks, pretty much stopped the virus in its tracks, at least made it manageable. So now, not all of their hospital beds are overflowing with people who are about to die. Instead, they have effectively contained COVID-19. If I were king for the day, let's return to that scenario again, I would shut down China for a couple of weeks, then I would shut down another significant economic block in the world, whether it's the United States or the European Union or whatever, we need to reduce the coronavirus threat. We need to manage that threat through isolating people, not allowing them to go out and mix in great numbers. If they did it in China, I'm pretty sure we can do it in the rest of the world. And so what I would suggest then in my king for a day scenario is that the United States next go into lockdown for a couple of weeks. This will be enough to stop the coronavirus where it is. It'll make the future of the coronavirus manageable because we won't have every hospital bed in the country full. Instead, what we will have is a relatively minor inconvenience. Yes, me not being able to go out to the grocery store, for example, for the next two weeks, or to the movies, for crying out loud, or whatever. That's an inconvenience, but it's a minor inconvenience. <clears throat> Recently, I saw a great line when something like this. Your grandparents were asked to make great sacrifices in light of a world war. You are being asked to sit on the couch for the next couple of weeks. You got this. And I think that's where we are. I think the only way we're going to simultaneously solve the COVID-19 problem, and it is a pandemic, so it's seriously a problem. The only way we can deal with that in a rational way that will not reduce the aerosols falling out of the sky or sufficiently to cause a global average spike in temperature is to do them at the same time. So again, shut down China for a couple of weeks, make sure that situation is managed and under control. Next up, shut down the United States for a couple of weeks until the coronavirus situation has resolved itself. Yes, it'll be inconvenient for a relatively short period of time, but I think we can all handle this. It takes more than two weeks for, pe for most people to starve to death. So as long as we have water flowing through the taps and Netflix, I'm pretty sure we can get through this. And I don't think I'll even need the Netflix. I have a couple of books here I've been wanting to read. So, so let's shut down, say, the United States next for a couple of weeks. And there are some indications that, that might be happening. And then after, say, a one-week break after the two-week shutdown to make sure everything's under control and the hospital beds aren't overflowing and tempers have settled down and everybody's able to go back to the grocery stores again and get fed, then maybe we shut down the European Union or part of the European Union and so on until we deal with each 
large economic area. I should point out also that just because there's been a 20% reduction in industrial activity in one part of the world, that doesn't mean we're going to die at the end of that 20%. Our survival is dependent upon the survival of many other organisms, most notably plants. So the absolute best time to shut down or reduce economic activity at the level of the globe and avoid negative consequences for humans is right now. Late winter, early spring. There's not a lot going on with respect to plant life. And that's what we depend upon for our lives is the plants and the mycorrhizae, the fungi, the bacteria, all the little things out there that we, most of us haven't paid a lot of attention to for a long time. We need to take care of those things and make sure that their populations aren't so profoundly reduced that we're unable to eat. And I think the way to do that is this staggered shutdown of economic blocks throughout the world until we simultaneously get through the coronavirus crisis and also deal with the reduction in aerosols, the reduction in industrial activity while surviving it, while allowing for plant life to survive it, because that's what we depend upon. So that global average rise in temperature that I've talked about many times impacts plant life, and that's why it impacts us. If we can, if we can have that happen, that reduction in industrial activity, if we can have that happen at the right time for the plants, we can get them through this, the plants and the, the smaller organisms as well. And so I think that's what I see going on. It's almost as if somebody besides me and a handful of other people know how to manage large-scale crises like a pandemic and abrupt climate change at the same time. I don't know if we're going to get through this. In fact, it would kind of surprise me if we got through this because this is a very, very large challenge to make sure that we continue to grow grains at large scale while also managing the aerosol masking effect, while also managing a pandemic. This is a big task. How we respond to this task is an incredible measure of our character. At the edge of extinction, only love remains. Let's keep that in mind. Let's use some of that love.